In this lesson, we're going to learn how to see anything in basic shapes. Welcome to the Artistic Matrix. Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh lesson of the second chapter of the first book of the Art Journey series. It's been a while, but I'm finally back with a new video. Today we are going to start seeing the world in a different perspective. Seeing things as basic shapes or building blocks instead of an organic, complex and complicated shape. I remember being so frustrated with this step when I first started drawing. I followed so many tutorials back then where the artists go from the basic shape sketch all the way to the detailed art with me still wondering how the heck did he even see the basic shapes of the object in the first place. I never knew how to dissect the object into basic shapes and where to cut an object and how to connect it to other basic shapes. It took me a long frustrating while to finally understand how to change the way I'm looking at objects from the basic overall look of an object to a specific 3D geometry of the said object. But before we dive in into this method, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell and leave a comment down below. And as always, this video is segmented into chapters, so you can jump into any chapter you want whenever you want. Now why is it important to draw things in basic shapes? There are many benefits to changing the way you look at the world. You as an artist should have a different way to look at how things exist and what they consist of. The way an artist observes his or her surrounding affects the way he or she can draw it, memorize it, manipulate it to make it fit into his or her own vision. So some of the benefits of drawing things in basic shapes are proportions. Drawing objects in basic shapes and in a very simple and basic lines help with measuring up the correct proportion of said object. It would be a huge waste of time and energy to draw things in full details only to find out that the object proportions are all wrong. It frustrates a lot of beginner artists to spend hours filling in the details for an object that is built upon a shaky foundation and wrong proportions. Simplifying an object into basic shapes in a few seconds will give you an overall view of its proportions right away so you don't have to waste lots of time in detailing a badly proportioned drawing. Benefit number 2 Easy to draw If you get the proportions right in the basic shapes phase, it will make filling up the details a much easier process. You won't have to check your drawing every minute and think there is something wrong with it and try to fix what is foundationally wrong. It removes a lot of the frustration for a beginner artist and makes the detailing part a much enjoyable experience. Drawing in stages makes your drawing a bit more methodical and procedural rather than chaotic and unorganized. It will make your approach to drawing more of a step-by-step -step process just like the tutorials you see many artists do. This way removes a lot of the pressure both in the beginning of the drawing and at the end of it. You can simply take a break after drawing the basic shapes and then continue afterward. Or just take your time with each step and enjoy the process, instead of approaching the whole drawing with proportions, perspective, detailing and rendering all at once. It's a more relaxing way to draw for sure. When you break down an object into its basic shapes, it will be much easier to remember afterward. Trying to remember what a lion looked like in all its details can be daunting and hard to recall. But when you break it down into few circles and triangles, you can simply record that shape and draw it from memory and then fill up the details using a reference. It will help store as much objects in your memory as possible. Think of it like storing one megabit file of a basic shape object versus storing a one gigabyte file of the same object in full details. You can only store so much of those before your hard drive or your brain is full, unlike storing simplified basic shape version of the same object. Since you can store that simplified basic shape object in your memory, you can also recall it and draw it in any position you like using these basic shapes. It's much easier to manipulate few basic shapes than a fully detailed object. You can simply move, rotate or scale few circles here and few triangles there in a 3D space and get a whole new pose for the same object completely from your own imagination. Try to do that with a fully rendered object and things will go wrong very fast. Drawing the basic shapes of an object converts your drawing from a 2D drawing to a 3D form of that object in a perspective space. Remember that 2D shapes are for copying an object and 3D forms are for recreating these objects later from imagination or memory. Once you learn how to draw basic shapes in 3D, you will have an overall understanding for the object in space. 
You won't need to remember the details as much. By doing this, you understand how the object function in the real world and how its parts connect with each other. It's the key to draw any object you see or you imagine in the entire universe. No object will be too hard to draw since any object that ever existed can be broken into its basic shapes. It's the truest way to look at the world around you. It's indeed the artist's vision. Once you have that ability, the world will never look the same to you again. Ok now that we know how important it is to draw anything in basic shapes, let's talk about how we can have the ability to break down objects to their basic shapes. And how many parts should you have? What are the main shapes and what are the connecting shapes in between? We can divide an object into main parts and connecting parts in between. The main parts need to be one of those basic shapes, a circle, a square or a triangle. These are the basic 2D shapes that we can extract as many variations from as needed, like ellipses, octagons, rectangles and so on. But when we draw these basic shapes, we make sure that we draw the 3D version of it in perspective. So instead of a circle, we draw a sphere, instead of a square, we draw a box, and instead of a triangle, we draw a pyramid, and so on. These basic shapes really represent actual part of an object as they are now. Most objects in the world are dynamic, animated version of these basic shapes. Dynamic basic shapes are basic shapes that convey motion in a certain way. The way we do that is by applying a form modifier. If you ever worked in a 3D software, you will know what a form modifier is. It's a modifier that you apply to your basic shape that turns it into a more complicated dynamic one. For example, a basic shape can be bent, twisted, tapered, squashed, or stretched into a different version of itself. Not only that, but these basic shapes can also be extruded either in themselves or into other shapes. They can have beveled edges, or maybe bridged in between, or even hinged from one place to another. They can also be swept into a spline or lofted from a different shapes to create a dynamic element. The whole point of manipulating these shapes is to create the perfect puzzle piece to fit the object you are trying to draw. The final purpose of all this is to create a full mannequin, the simplest and the fastest correct way to draw your object in its most basic form. You are going to need all the tools we talked about previously to observe, learn and dissect your object into its basic form. So if you missed some of the videos in the series, please do watch it and practice it before moving on with this lesson. It will help you a lot knowing how to use these tools in navigating this lesson. So before we start going into examples, let's first start with learning how to turn basic shapes into dynamic ones, starting with the form modifier. Now we mentioned the form modifiers before, but now let's go into each one of those modifiers with some examples. The first modifier is the most common of them all. We use it to represent a continuous form for either the main part of the object or the connecting part. So for example, bending the cylinder will result in this dynamic cylinder that can represent a piece of a mechanical object, a connector, or even the neck of an animal. You can do the same for the box and for the pyramid. And finally, the sphere. Bending basic shapes is essential for drawing dynamic parts of objects. If you have trouble imagining how a box or a cylinder bends, you can draw the path from beginning to end and add the shape of the object in both ends and then connect them between them. If it's still too hard, you can segment the object even more and draw the same section in between and connect from the start to the midpoint first, then from that to the end. The second modifier is the twist. Twisting an object means that the path in between the start and the finish is twisted in the middle. Maybe once, maybe even more. This is a bit more complex than the bend because you have to imagine the object being rotated in 3D perspective. If you are having trouble with perspective at this point, don't worry, I will be doing an introduction to perspective video right after this one. So in case you can't imagine it, I will help you out in that video, right after this one. I went back and forth in making this video first or delaying it after the perspective one, but in general, I don't think you need to know everything about perspective to be able to do this. But in any case, that video will be here shortly after this one. If you need help with drawing these twisting shapes, you can draw the beginning and the end of the shape section and then draw the midpoint section but rotate it at 90 degrees in case you want it to rotate that much. You can make that angle less or more depending on how much you want it to twist. Now, it will be easy doing this with a box or a pyramid but a bit tricky with a cylinder. You need to imagine that the midpoint ellipse is rotated more than the two ends. We can do that by drawing the major and minor axis of that mid ellipse. This way you will see where the cylinder is twisting at and by how much. We rarely draw 180 degrees twisting object as a basic shape. 
Most of the time the twist is barely visible, maybe between 5 and 15 degrees. But it's good to know how to do it in a full range, then you can use whatever degree you want. The next modifier is the taper. Tapering an object is to make one end of the object larger or smaller than the other end. The most famous example of this of course is turning a cylinder into a cone. As you can see the end is bigger than the start. This is very useful when trying to draw the neck of an animal or even some of the limbs. This is much easier to apply than a twist. All you have to do is to draw the section of the beginning and the end of the object in different sizes, then connect them between them. We can do it as well for all the basic shapes we talked about. Then we have the squash and stretch modifiers. These are basically the same as the taper modifier, but instead of connecting in between the two ends with straight lines, we connect them with curved lines. A concave line for the stretch modifier and a convex line for the squash modifier. Notice that the size of the object will be shorter with the squash and taller with the stretch. We can either taper the ends here or leave them as equal, but both will be with curved sides. We can also apply this for all the basic shapes above. All these modifiers can be grouped together or layered into sweeping or lofting modifier. It means that instead of taking every one of the previous modifiers, we can simply separate the object into two parts. The sections of the object, meaning the section of the object on both ends and the ones in the middle, and the path these shapes move into in between the sections. So for example, if I have a large rectangle on the start of the shape and a smaller one at the end, I can connect in between them with a path and get a tapered box. Or I can draw another section in the middle and rotate it a bit and get a twisted box. Or if you want to go even more complex, I can start with a box and end with a cylinder and get this dynamic shape in between. We don't even have to stick with basic shapes, we can add different types of shapes and manipulate the sections and the path to get different dynamic shapes to represent more complex parts of a larger object showing its motion and form in a very dynamic way. Sweeping or lofting is more fit for organic objects that you are trying to draw. But what about mechanical objects that have a more of a strict form? Well we can use a different set of modifiers that also common in the 3D world. For example, we can use the extrude modifier. Extruding a face out of a basic shape will create a more complex one. You can extrude either a full face as it segments the object into different parts or you can extrude an outlined face from it to expand this object further. You can either extrude it outward or boolean it inward and cut some of the shapes in. Now you don't only have to use rectangles with boxes but you can also extrude a cylinder out of a box or a pyramid out of a cylinder and so on. These complex shapes can be used as either main parts of a mechanical object or a connecting piece in between the main shapes. We can also use beveled edges to represent more realistic manufactured shapes. These chamfered edges will morph a straight line edge into a more smooth curved edge. We can do that by cutting the edge on both sides and then connect in between them with a curved line. There are other modifiers like bridging between objects or hinging from an edge but these are a bit too complicated for this lesson. So we may go into this a bit more in an advanced lesson later. For now just know that there are modifiers that help you turn a basic shape into a dynamic organic one and modifiers that help you turn basic shapes into dynamic mechanical ones. Also remember that these modifiers can be used alone or layered on top of each other. The purpose of all these modifiers as we said is to create a dynamic form that can be grouped together to create the simplest and fastest mannequin that represent the complex object you are trying to draw. Now that we know how to convert our basic shapes into dynamic ones, let's learn how we can connect these shapes together. To do so, we need to know how to draw these objects correctly, so we would be able to connect them together in an easy manner. We have 7 different drawing tools to do so. These tools will help you connect these parts into one whole mannequin that represent your object. The first tool we have is drawing through the object. Drawing through the object means drawing all the sides of the basic shape to show its 3D form and perspective. Drawing through the objects helps you determine the size of the form, its proportions, location and how other forms around it connect to it. The second tool is to draw the center line. Drawing the center line of the form helps you with the 3D orientation, movement and connections. The center line will show you how an ellipse or a rectangle is orientated and how it's connected to other parts of the object. The third set of tools are center points, angles and measurements. We talked about the angle and measurements before. They are a set of tools that help you align your lines together in a correct way. They also help with proportions, segmentations and combining all parts together into one object. 
As for the center points, they are used as a reference to help with attaching the connecting parts to the main parts. For example, it's much easier to connect the neck of an animal to the torso if you know each shape center point. The fourth tool is axis and gesture line. Axes are the center line for the object as a whole, instead of each face. It shows the orientation of the object in perspective. It helps with aligning up the basic shapes parts into each other. The gesture line on the other hand has the same function but with the addition of showing movement as well as orientation. Axes are usually used for the mechanical object while gestures are used for organic ones. The fifth tool is knowing the difference between the main shape and the connecting shape. I mentioned many times the main parts and the connecting parts, but how would you determine which is which? The main shape is usually the part where the other parts connect to, while the connecting part is the two point line between the main shapes. For example, the torso would be the main shape as well as the arms, while the shoulder joints, the elbows and the wrists are the connecting shapes. You can also consider the area between the rib cage and the pelvis as a connecting area in between the two. The sixth tool is the contour line and form lines. The contour line is simply the outline of an object. It describes the silhouette of the object without getting into the interior details. That's where the form lines comes in. They are the interior lines describing the form of an object and what its surface looks like. The seventh and the final tool is the section lines. Now that we defined the object contour and form lines, we can also draw through it and describe how it will look like all around even the hidden parts with the section lines. Section lines can be vertical, horizontal, or along an axis as long as it describes the interior of the object. Section lines help with proportion and the depth of each part of the object. Using these tools will help you connect the converted basic shapes together and turn your complex objects into simplified dynamic shapes that can be memorized, replicated, and recalled anytime you want. So we know now why to use basic shapes how to convert basic shapes to dynamic shapes, and what tools to use to combine these shapes together. But I still didn't explain how. How can you extract basic shapes out of a complex object? I can almost hear you saying that you don't know where does the main shape starts and where the connecting parts end. So let's change the way you look at the world. That shouldn't be too hard, right? Okay, so here are some tips and mindset to be aware of while observing an object that will help you dissect it into smaller basic shapes. Know where to cut off your shapes. Before you can even convert a complicated object into smaller, simpler parts, you need to know first where to cut off the parts and what will be the main part and what will be the connecting part. This might be intimidating at first, but trust me, it's not that hard if you don't overthink it. Start with the biggest section of the object as the main part, especially when you see a part that has so many connections getting in or out of it. For example, let's look at this palm. The first thing you should discard is the interior details. Just focus on the main and connecting shapes. Here we have all this as a base, and all this as a top, and the part in between is the connecting shape. This is the whole theory in short. Now how you cut the shape, what basic shapes to use, and how many shapes you want to use will come with experience. For example, we can cut this down even more with more shapes. We can change the basic shapes we use, we can use dynamic shapes, using the modifiers we talked about, or we can shade the placement where we cut the objects itself. But the basics are the same. What changes are the aesthetics used in applying the method. Here's another example we mentioned before. A torso is a main part cause the hips, the head, and the arms are all coming out of it. So it's basically defined as a main, but where it gets tricky is the smaller parts. For example, the upper arm can be another main part cause it's a static object that isn't a joint and it's connected to both the shoulder and the elbow, which are joints. That makes these two joints a connecting part, cause joints are connecting parts by definition, unlike the arm itself. Another example would be this cheetah. The main torso, the head, the pelvis, the legs are all main parts, while the neck, the hips, and the joints are all connecting parts. You will have more freedom dissecting organic shapes, but I think it's more strict and a bit easier when it comes to mechanical objects. We do follow the same concept though. It's a bit easier to do with mechanical forms since the lines between the forms are much more defined. For example, this microscope. You can draw the whole thing as a box and then sculpt it into smaller parts. If you want to define those parts, we can take the base, the clip stage, the headpiece as main parts and the connection in between as connecting parts. Also be wary not to get confused by the details. All those dials and small bits sticking out here and there are not main or connecting parts. These are details. Don't even consider them while converting these objects into basic shapes. 
Same for organics, don't do interior lines or features like eyes, mouth, nose and so on. You can just hint at them with simple gesture line but don't cut the interior details as separate parts or you're just going to make a complicated shape even more complex. Go for big shape first, all the way to smaller ones. Just like with macro and micro angles, we have macro and micro shapes. Always start with the whole object as one shape, use a binding box or a binding sphere to cover the whole shape first, before moving into the smaller and smaller parts. The torso for example you go first, then the head next, the legs later and so on. Starting big to small is something you will hear a lot in your art journey. It's never a good idea to start with the details first. That sentence alone took me almost 5 years to fully understand it and finally accept it. 5 years to stop going into details right away from the start. Don't be me and don't go into details right away. Always, always start big and then go to smaller details. Find the closest basic shapes to your main and connecting parts. Basic versus dynamic shapes. Once you figure out where to cut your shapes at, now you have to figure out what shape to use to represent those forms. Would a box be a better fit or a sphere or maybe a pyramid? This part will come with practice. Don't expect to nail this right from the start. It's a series of experimentations and mileage. Sometimes the shape you use simplifies things and sometimes it just complicates things even more. So find the closest basic shape to both your main and connecting parts and experiment with it. Notice that I said start with basic shapes first, cause it's much easier to start with a box than a very dynamic twisting and bending shapes. Once you have experimented enough with basic shapes and you know exactly what you want to use, you can then move on to dynamic shapes and represent your object into a more defined simplified version using those shapes. If things don't work, try different basic shapes and different compositions of them. So what if you started using basic shapes for the main and connecting parts and it didn't work out? Just like I mentioned above, experiment with different ones. A box didn't work out, use a sphere. That didn't work out, use a pyramid. That didn't work out, combine basic shapes together. That didn't work out, use dynamic shapes. Keep on trying different shapes till you nail it. Now what if you did use the right shape but the combination of all the shapes didn't fit together? Like a torso shape didn't work with the shoulder shape or the arms or the legs. Change the composition of these shapes. Use something different for the arms or the torso or switch in between. Make them both the same shape or different ones. So don't just experiment with the shape itself but the collection of shapes as a whole till you find your perfect fit. Use the tools to connect in between shapes. Angles, measurements, segmentation, negative space. Use these tools as I mentioned before. These tools will help you adjust the sizes and placement of these shapes in their correct position. Even negative space will help you a lot in determining what basic shapes to use for the object. It's a really bad idea to have your shapes right and your composition right but mess up with bad proportions and measurements. So if you aren't aware of these tools yet, please go back and watch the previous video. I made a video for each tool and went all the way in details for each one. Master them before moving forward with this technique. Think 3D rather than 2D. While you are doing this, always think in a 3D space in perspective. This means you draw your basic or dynamic shapes all around. You don't draw a circle, you draw a sphere. You don't draw a rectangle, you draw a box. With all the hidden sides in light tones so you don't get confused. Drawing this way gives you kind of a space awareness of the object you are trying to draw. It puts it in the right perspective while drawing it. Now as I said, I was planning to do a perspective lesson before this one and hopefully I will. So if perspective still confuses you, help is at hand. The perspective video will be shortly after this one, so don't worry. But for now, draw all around your shapes and just know that this isn't a 2D drawing you are trying to copy, but an object in space that needs to be placed right. If all fails, go for a squint. If you still can't tell where to cut your object or what shape to use to represent it, squint your eyes and look at your object with unfocused vision. This famous technique gives the artist the ability to see beyond the details, textures, colors, materials and so on. It will only allow you to see main forms of the object, which is exactly what we are looking for here. Squinting may show you the volume and the form of each part and make it easier to pick the correct shape for it. Last resort, trace. So you have tried all the above methods, tools and techniques and still can't figure the correct shapes to use? No worries, trace it. It's totally okay to trace when you are still learning and whoever says otherwise is wrong. You can quote me on that. Put a new layer on top of the object or a tracing paper if you are doing this traditionally and use the whole set again. 
Maybe the eye-hand coordination is what confusing you here. Tracing will allow you to draw over the object with different shapes till you find the one shape that fits that part. You see I said till you find one shape that fits your parts. I didn't say trace the outline. That's a big no-no here. We are not trying to trace the outline of the object. We are trying to fit an object into a container that even though it's not 100% an outline, it's like a, a suitcase that this part can fit in. Once you are able to figure this out, you can now practice your way out of the tracing and back into normal drawing. So use this as a last resort, if all fails. I always thought that drawing basic shapes is easy. It's like those meme tutorials. Draw a circle, then just add some details. But as you saw so far, it's not that simple. It's a process, a step-by-step -step process to convert detailed object into a simple you can memorize, manipulate, and reproduce. It's not a symbol that you might make up out of fake memories, but one that is based in reality and lots and lots of practice. Alright, now that we are done with the theoretical part of the lecture, how about we do a few examples to see how you can actually do this step by step. And as always, I like to start with easy examples and go up the scale bit by bit. So let's do that next, starting with this chess piece. Okay, let's dissect the queen piece for a change. I'm going to do a couple of versions. I will try basic shapes, dynamic shapes, different compositions, just to cover every aspect of the process. Then we will move on to do just one option for each example. In all three iterations, the basics are the same. We have the base, a top, and a connecting part in between. Everything else is just details. So with that in mind, let's dive in. In the first iteration, I will choose a wrong shape to start with. To show you even wrong shapes will lead you to the final drawing, but it will make your life more difficult drawing it and it will take a longer time doing so. This chess piece is obviously a cylindrical shape, so to start with a box is the wrong way to do it, but let's do it anyway. I start with the overall box first for the whole shape, and then divide the major landmarks for this piece, the base, the top, and the connection part in between. Once I have the main shape, now I start carving up the details out of the big marble box. The most important tool to use here is measurements. Every point I make is related to another one on the drawing. Nothing is arbitrary here. You can see me going back to the drawing and making small measurements just to be sure. I'm also using angles, segmentation, and negative shape to put the rest of the proportions in. Once I'm done with the major boxes, I create a new layer and start curving even more of the actual shapes the chess piece. I'm no longer worried about the main measurements since the proportions are all laid down. All I have to do now is curve those boxes into a smoother element of the chest piece. The first drawing is easy because the piece is symmetrical, so I don't have to do both sides, just draw one side and mirror it except for the top which isn't symmetrical. And with that the drawing is done, but it looks a bit of a mess because I was just fixing things up, so now I can clean it up on a new layer. Here I make sure that it's one hit one line, no chicken scratches here, be confident of what you draw and go for it. Also notice when mirroring you will get some weird artifacts in the middle, so don't forget to correct them.
Always mirror, rotate, or move the canvas around while drawing to get into your comfortable drawing position to get the best lines you can draw. Finally, I will add some line weight and form lines just to describe the shape a bit more, just to make it look a bit better. And here it is, the first option is done. From boxes to dynamic shapes to a final drawing. Now let's try another option but this time using the correct basic shape. So I start this one with the vertical axis instead of the bounding box. Just to show you more ways you can start your drawing. Also I'm starting this time with a correct shape, a cylinder. But with the same basics, the base, the connecting shape and the top. The top shape is a tapered cylinder with curved sides. As I said before, don't worry about any small details here like the crown teeth, just draw the major shape of the object. Now that the main shapes are done, I recheck the proportion and if it's all correct, I move on to the details. Same as before, I just need to work on the half of the object and mirror the rest with the exception of the top. You can tell right away that the workflow is much smoother and faster this time, cause I went with the correct basic shape instead of the wrong one. Always choose the shape that will make your work easier not harder. Once the first draft is done, I go over the shape and fix any mistakes. When it's all done, I can lower the opacity, add more line weight, and form lines afterward.
And there it is, the basic shape, dynamic shape and the final drawing side by side. Much better shapes and workflow this time. Let's now go to the advanced option. Dynamic shapes right away with different composition. When you do enough exercises and master this method, you can skip the basic shape stage and go right into the dynamic shape one. So for this example, I start with the vertical axis and do the whole base as one complex shape. I do the same for the middle part and the top one as well. I'm no longer guessing the shapes here. I'm just drawing the major form without any details, like the crown without any teeth and so on. Once the first draft is done and any mistakes fixed, we go right into the line weight and the form line stage. And this one took 15 minutes in comparison to the 20 and 25 minutes of the second and the first option. But do not do this before you have mastered this method with basic shapes first. I'm just showing you the end goal of this method. And here are all the three options side by side, the box, the cylinder and the dynamic shape option. As you can see you will get the same result at the end but how long it takes and how easy it is will depend on your basic and dynamic shape choices. Alright let's go up a level and draw this wooden train toy. No longer we have a symmetrical shape here but we still have an easy object to draw. I mean it's literally made out of basic shapes so you won't have to guess a lot but it's important to know what to start with and how to phase out details before you start drawing the first draft so here are the main shapes of this toy if this confuses you to why I choose this shape as main and not connections forget about the naming just think of it as the major big shapes of this object that's what to start with next we add the attachments or the connections like the wheels and the other parts so let's start with the main bounding box for the whole object so we know where to draw it.
Next, I draw the main cylinder as obviously a cylinder. Then I draw the base all the way through. I'm not drawing just a 2D object but an actual 3D object in space. It will make it easier to connect things to once you know how far it goes. I add the main cabinet in the back as a box while measuring each point to the main cylinder. Now we can add the attachments to the whole object like the top of the cabinet, the columns and the wheels. Here is the window for the cabinet which is an extruded shape inside the cabinet box. Make use of Photoshop's transform tool to change a normal circle you draw into an ellipse in perspective. I find it a bit easier to draw a circle than an ellipse. And we are almost done with the first draft, we can move around and fix any mistakes in the drawing. Now we can move on and clean up the drawing with line weight and add some form lines to define the shapes a bit more. As I mentioned many times before, don't worry about the line weight just yet, we will talk about it in a whole new video later on. And here it is, a toy train with basic shapes done in basic shapes. Please don't have a drink every time I say basic shapes or 
things gonna go wrong. Well this was kind of cheating since this object itself gave us the correct basic shapes. So let's make things a bit harder and move on to our cartoon character. So here I start with the overall bonding box and then move on to the dynamic shapes right away. The head is simply a triangle but with curved sides and a bit of a squeeze in the middle. The two ears can be drawn as circles. The body looks like an ellipse. The two arms are loft shapes starting with small circle and ending with a big one. We are going over all the tools and shapes we talked about before in this example. The legs and feet are all constructed out of ellipses. And with that, we are done. All we have to do now is go around and fix any mistakes and make sure the proportions are correct. Finally, I add a new layer and start adding the details. Adding details are the easiest part of the drawing, even for beginner artists, because they can't go wrong once you have the correct proportion and bounding boxes. It's like having an invisible grid that you are just adding details onto. Even the interior shapes are all constructed out of basic shapes, like circles, ellipses, and triangles. In the end, I add more line weight and form lines and finish up the drawing. And here it is with the dynamic shapes and the final drawing side by side. Alright, let's go up a level again and draw this steampunk object. The object constructed out of basic shapes just like the train but with much more subtlety than the train. But the basics are the same. The main shape consists of an elongated ball like an American football with few attachments to it. The attachments are mostly cylinders and tubes. So I start with the main shape and draw some sections in the middle and both ends just to make sure I know how big it is. Then I draw the middle axis to anchor the rest of the details to it. Remember, axis and gesture lines are great tools to help connect shapes together. Now that I have the main shape, I can attach the lenses to it, which are inside a cylinder that goes from one side to the other. The top attachments are cylinders in different sizes. Everything I draw after is related to something I already drew. Measurements are a key to a correct drawing. Measure everything you want to draw to something you already did and you won't go wrong. Now that I have the main shapes in, I can go around fixing any mistakes or proportions before moving on to the details. Now even if the main shapes aren't complete or include every details in it, it doesn't matter because details can be simply added later. You just need to focus on the main global shape. I add a new layer and start adding the details. If drawing circles and ellipses are hard, you can always copy the one you made and manipulate it into the new position, then draw over it again.
As I move around, I can now add all the details I missed in the previous stage. This is more of a freehand drawing as it looks, but behind all this are the measurements, the segmentations, the angles, and the negative space that are happening in my mind as I draw. Now the details are done, I can add a new layer and start improving the line weight and add some minor details and form lines to make it look better. I add some shading in the end as a final touch but I don't want to take too long on each drawing so I can add as many examples as possible. All examples are between 15 to 25 minutes in real time but you should take all the time you need to be as accurate as possible. And here is the final drawing along with the basic shapes side by side. Alright, going up another level and increasing the difficulty as we go up. Now we have to draw this traditional Asian style building. The major shape of the building is an obelisk, triangular top and a square base. But if you want to go into more details, we can draw the main base and the roofs as the main shape and the rest of the building as one connecting shape. The easy part of this drawing is we have symmetry again. So we draw the mid axis and focus on one side of the building. We draw the major obelisk shape for the whole building, then go into the details. The building has a bit of a third point perspective, so we have a slightly leaning wall, but I will make it straight in my drawings just to make it easier for now. As you can see, I only have to draw one side and mirror it to the other side. Now I do the same for the connecting parts above, but notice that the building is getting smaller as it goes up, so we scale each floor a little bit toward the top. We do the same for the roofs and finally the top end of the building.
Now the building is simply done. All we have to do now is to add the details for the one side and replicate it to the other. Like here for example I added one detailed floor and replicated it to the top with some adjustment in size here and there. Now that I'm done, I can stretch the drawing to mimic the perspective in the reference photo. It's much easier to do it this way rather than drawing it in a third perspective. Final touches are being added like line weight, form lines and shading to the drawing. And it's done. Here it is with the simple basic shape we started with. Alright, we are now in the difficult section of this exercise with organic characters. Starting with the lioness. The shapes here are based on the anatomy of the lioness. A circle for the ribcage, one for the pelvis, one for the head, and then dynamic cylinders for the arms and legs. The connection parts are mostly joints, the neck, the hips, and so on. But first we start with the bounding box so we don't go overboard with the proportions. The head is a circle with a box attached for the muzzle. The shoulders all the way to the paws are a series of circles and cylinders also based on anatomy. Same with the legs. Here are all the basic shapes for the lioness. Now we can go around and fix any mistakes. Once we are done with that, we can now move a bit closer and start adding the details. This video is not about the details at all. It's about how to dissect the fully organic object on the left into basic simple shapes you see on the right. Adding details are pure measurements and observation skills.
Now that I have the structure done, I can move around and add the details. The final layer is for the form lines, line weight, and shading. And here it is side by side with the basic shapes. Let's go to the pre-final level and draw the statue of an anime character. Now I show the statue instead of a drawing cause it's a 3D object in perspective instead of a 2D drawing. It's always better to draw from real life or photos than other artists drawing. Simply because any problem has already been solved by said artist. So it's better to solve your own problems with normal objects. But if you are still learning everything is allowed. So don't worry about it just yet. Anyway, for this we have two parts. The figure itself and the clothes on top. Now you can go right ahead and draw what you see, instead of drawing both parts. But it's always a good idea to understand the object you are drawing instead of copying what you see. Knowing how the figure looks behind the clothes makes you understand the fabrics on top. So the figure can be drawn using many, many combinations of basic shapes and mannequins as I talked about in other figure drawing videos I made. But for now we will go with boxes, cylinders, spheres to be as basic as possible. As for the clothes, we will use loft and sweep shapes to create this dynamic representation for the clothes. So let's start first with the figure itself by drawing the head first as two ellipses. The neck as a cylinder, the torso and the hips as smooth boxes and the connection between the two as a sphere. and then the arms and legs as cylinders and the joints as spheres. And just like that we got the full mannequin done. Now we can lower the opacity and draw the clothes on top. We now know where the clothes connect with since we can see the body behind it. This will fix lots of problems with beginner art especially with proportions and measurements. Drawing blindly without the body will make you copy things without understanding them. Always know the function and purpose of what you draw and you will remember it much more and recall it much easier.
Now we are almost done. We can lower the opacity a bit and draw on top with a confident cleaner lines and some shading here and there. And here it is, with the basic shapes next to it. The final example is the most complicated one, a very hard figure pose. But don't worry, it's the same process as all the examples before, so take your time with it. As before, we can go with so many figure mannequins options and many figure drawing methods using different basic shapes and dynamic shapes. You can check out the figure drawing series if you want to see each method in details. But for now, let's go with the easiest one and pick the most obvious shapes like spheres, cylinders, and boxes for this figure. So we start with the head, first with the two ellipses, then combining them into a dynamic shape for the head. A peanut shape for the torso as a whole, with marks for the rib cage and the pelvis. There is a whole method for peanut shape drawing in a different video, you can find it on the top right corner, if you want to check it for the figure drawing. It's a very easy method to draw the figure. And finally spheres and cylinders for the arms and legs. And there you go, the whole thing is done. This is 90% of the whole drawing. You can go around the drawing and start fixing proportions and mistakes as you go. Now we can finally add the details on top and fine tune the drawing bit by bit. Again, it's much easier to draw the clothes here since we know where they are attaching to and what's underneath them.
and the final stage after this to add the final layer and enhance your line art. Finally adding some shades and form lines And it's done. And here it is side by side with the basic shapes. And here are all the examples we did so far for this lesson and the basic shapes for them. Drawing objects in basic shape is your first step into seeing the world with different eyes. You are now understanding what you are drawing and deconstructing the objects in real life in a way that is easier to understand, easier to remember and easier to recall later on. This lesson will open up the door to the visual library that you will start filling in from now on and to the rest of your life with many many objects and scenes. Take your time and practice this method a lot until you master it. It's gonna be time well spent, trust me on that. And this is it for this lesson and it's time for the homework. As always there is an easy mode and a hardcore mode if you are up to it. For the easy homework you can pick 5 different subjects to draw. Start very simple with easy objects like chess pieces or cartoon and go up the scale every time you feel confident enough to the advanced level. Draw each subject 3 times using different basic shapes and dynamic shapes with each one of them and see how different your outcome will be with each option. Also pay attention to how long it takes and how easy it is to get to the final drawing with each option. You will end up with 15 drawings in total with this option. For the hard mode we increase the objects to 15 but we keep it 3 options for each. So increase the complexity of the objects but keep the 3 options for each one of them. In total you will have 45 drawings in the end of this exercise. But of course, don't stop at that number, keep on drawing. And this is it for lesson 7 of the first book of the R Journey series. It's the 6th exercise in a long list of exercises for the beginners yet to come. I hope you enjoyed it and learned from it. It's a very important step in your journey, another milestone in your journey toward being an artist. So watch and rewatch it again, but most importantly, apply it and practice it over and over again. Before I go, I'd like to thank my Patreons who donated to my channel. If you'd like to donate to my channel, please go to patreon.com slash rainwalker. Thank you all for your generosity. I also like to send a shout out to the members of this channel who joined for almost 7 months now. So thank you for your great contributions. If you'd like to join, you can hit the join button underneath this video. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more art tutorials for beginners, paintings, and visual library series. Check the subscribe button underneath this video to stay tuned and click the notification bell to stay up to date with new videos. By the way, I'm sorry this video took too long to make, but moving out from one apartment to another took ages. Uprooting yourself from one place to another after almost 15 years is just pure pain. But I'm finally done moving and ready to get back to work and hopefully make more videos for all the 3 book series. But for now, if you wanna see other videos for beginners, click over here. Or if you want to check out how to draw the figure series, which has so many methods like Andrew Loomis, Frank Riley or the peanut method we talked about here, you can click on it over here. As for now, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.